is how many in the state people have to be paid to knock on those doors and hand out this information. So this is the thing we look to the future for. Gabby. Actually, the plan is that medical marijuana and recreational marijuana will be done out of the same location. So what they're going to do is it's going to be very similar to a, a, what we see at Rite Aid currently. We have everything that's behind the counter is prescribed. Everything in front of the counter or over the counter is equal to ibuprofen and Tylenol. That will be the recreational area. Okay, so they are moving towards a very pharmacy version is what they're going towards. Okay, uh, it's not going to be, uh, you're not going to see cannabis in gas stations and things of that sort. You're going to see cannabis in literal pharmacies for cannabis. Now, someone said today, well, isn't there already a pill that insurance covers? This was the naysayer. <laughs> And Sarah spoke up and said, yes, there is, but it's not all natural. <laughs> huh? I'll take care of that one. Okay. okay. And we talked about the naturality of um, a tablet like this, in which it is all natural. If they're going to give us something in pharmaceuticals, keep it natural. It doesn't have to be synthetics. You know, learn how to extract and give us the best medicine ever and make it affordable. Affordable, that's the thing. And another thing you have to remember, and this just came to my mind, and I don't know if it fits in anywhere, but people talk about the cost. You know, when we talk about people with uh, conditions and they're using extracts for cancer and that, they're like, but the cost is astronomical. It's like 6000 3000 5000 a month. That is. If you don't have it, you don't have that. I mean, that's a lot of money when you are treating your cancer. You might not be working usually and things like that. But you have to remember, it's because it's not covered under insurance. Sarah was telling us the cost because that's what Sarah does, is, is pharmacy. She works for pharmacy and she said, I just feel so guilty every day I'm on the phone. I don't, I'm going to tell them about cannabis and I can't. She goes, Heidi, the cost of these medicines way outweigh the cost of cannabis. If these people have to pay for this medicine on their own, it's like six, seven, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 for some of this cancer medicine. So when you put it, you know, when you're comparing an apple to an apple, yes, the cost is expensive, but the only reason pharmaceuticals are, are cheaper now for some is because of the insurance. So maybe someday insurance will pick up the natural cannabis. I agree with everything you're saying. Thank you. Um, but I think it's wrong to say something is cheaper because of it's cheaper to the people sometimes. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. It's it's less expensive to the people who have insurance to pay their co-pays, but in all actuality, the cost in society is, is just as much. And for, thank you. And for the people who don't have insurance, the cost is about the same if you need to get the medicine. But then there's the cost of being on pharmaceuticals. Well, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> that is a whole nother story, which, yes, there is a cost to that um, for some. And for some, there's a benefit. We have to remember that we, we are not anti-pharmaceutical at all. Um, there are medicine out there that has done wonders for many, but some things just can't help, and cannabis does. Per the things that cannabis does that the Marinol does not do you know anybody that is going through cancer chemotherapy treatments, they have a hard time keeping anything down. So when you give them a Marinol pill for, as their treatment, if they're having problems keeping anything down, that pill's not going to have time to sit in their stomach and dissolve. It's going to come right back up. And Sarah said that about it, too, that because it's a synthetic, they, it t doesn't tend to help with the nausea and ability to eat quite as well as uh, raw cannabis does. Yeah. So, um, where are we at? So anyways, any, any questions from here? 
All right. Um, I'm going to give it to Mish from here. He's going to talk about uh, Royal Oak, and that's right here. And he's going to talk about the FDA building and CFC and a couple things like that. Well, the air, one other area that she didn't talk about in, you know, sort of whispering in the back over there, uh, there is a type of cannabis that's uh, coming out. It's a cannabis tablet that actually is covered by insurance. And it is, it does have THC in it. And it does have CBD in it. Oh, yes. Okay, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And it's only currently being sold and prescribed in California at this point. But it is happening. And uh, it's, it's hard to believe. It really is. But I actually met the person that was involved with this. I even talked to the owner that was involved to this involved with this and I was act, I was absolutely shocked actually on how knowledgeable they were um, the owner is a doctor his wife is an attorney and they figured out how to get the application process done for getting the getting the tablet insured and this particular medicine is insured by Medicare and Blue Cross Blue Shield in California. It's being prescribed by MDs currently. And you do not have to be a medical cannabis patient. I mean, this is how serious it is, okay? Um, the individuals that are involved, I can't, I can't say their names just yet, and I can't say the, say the name of the company just yet, but I want you to know, yes, we did meet with them. Yes, we did talk to them. And one of the big things that they stated over and over and over again, every single company that we want to see and every single company that we wanted to talk to and, and, and understand where this is going, none of them can educate the public about their medicine. Not one company can educate the public about their medicine. Not one. It's all controlled by the FDA and DEA, and they require, they require organizations like ours to be able to provide that teaching, provide that education to the public. Pretty amazing. Uh, if you call up American Cancer Society, they actually tell you the treatment options that are out there, the different types of treatment options. Okay, Besides your doctors and your nurses, American Cancer Society actually directs you to treatment options that are out there. Well, in our case, we're going to be the cannabis treatment option. So that's what we're all about. We're all about teaching all the different ways that you can get cannabis. And in our state, we're not going to have, uh, we don't have this. I don't know how long it's going to be before we have this, though. Um, I, I've heard two, three years tops before this version comes here. Okay, two, three years. Did you happen to hit on what the benefit of a tablet over the um, it's pretty similar to what Sativex is doing. Sativex is more of a, a liquid form that's going in. This is more of a tablet form, and of course when you're digesting it, it's going to take just a tad bit longer. But as soon as it gets in your bloodstream, it starts working. It starts working every single time. And it's consistent. You're not, we're not worried about strains, we're not worried about uh, the types of cannabis, or we're not worried about the, uh, you know, the amounts of it. It is always consistent every single time. Majority of the cancer patients that are out there don't have consistency. So what's happening to them? A lot of them are having their cancer metastasize because they can't go get on a, a regular regiment. So keep that in mind. Um, I am going to be talking about a few other things. Uh, I do have, is it the Royal Oak? Yeah, there we go. Um, so on, was it Monday? No. Go ahead. Why can't you disclose the company and when would you like to disclose? Um, they aren't available in Michigan yet, so as soon as the Michigan option opens up is when I'll be able to disclose it. Currently, they're only in California. Um, See now. Uh, this occurred, was it Monday night? Monday night. Monday night. Uh, we went to Royal Oak uh, to get our uh, nonprofit recognized as a 
federal nonprofit, and we have to have a local city recognize us. Uh, we did this in Romulus, and uh, they pushed it a little bit. But we got to Royal Oak, and our, uh, our offices are in Royal Oak. Um, Jim Campbell is out there, too. Uh, this is what the article stated. A charitable gaming license is all that stands in the way for the Downriver Community Compassion Club, also known as Michigan Compassion, to sell raffle tickets for its fundraisers in Royal Oak. The organization is an advocate and educational source for the uses of medical cannabis. On Monday, the Royal Oak City Commission voted to recognize the organization's nonprofit status, which enables it to move forward with obtaining the gaming permit. The application materials submitted by Michigan Compassion have been reviewed, and staff has concluded that Michigan Compassion has met all objective criteria established in the City Commission, said Royal Oak City Manager Don Johnson. In its website, Michigan Compassion states, we believe everyone should have access to the most current and correct information when deciding on their treatment options. No one touched by the healing properties of medical cannabis should ever feel alone. Together we become stronger and have the power to generate positive change in ourselves and our community through education and a better understanding about cannabis, otherwise known as medical marijuana. They actually approved us. It was a 4-2 vote. And the uh, four that supported us were all males. One of them was Jim Razor. And uh, some of you know him. Uh, he uh, represented Big Daddy at one point, a couple of years ago. And uh, Don, Commissioner Don, uh, Commissioner Giannotti was another one. And he was very vocal about it. He said, welcome to Royal Oak. We need someone like you. Uh, Jim Razor sta stated it very clearly that uh, our organization provides key information to keep our com the, their citizens safe. And that's good. That's real positive. This is Royal Oak. And yes, it's in Oakland County. <laughs> so yes, there's a big flag in Oakland County, and uh, we're going to end up starting a uh, Royal Oak public meeting there here shortly. So keep that in mind. We're going to be uh, doing that very shortly as well. So yes, we got the approval. It was a four to two vote. The two naysayers um, was one of them was the mayor pro tem who felt that we hadn't supplied enough. Uh, services or community services in their area, which was a little hard to believe since we just expanded our offices there. Uh, and the second person was a very interesting individual. Uh, her name was Commissioner Goodwin, and her opinion was that she had a philosophical difference with our organization and couldn't say yay to our organization, which was not the reason why we were there. We were not there for philosophical reasons. We were there because our application was done. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, that's going to happen in the next couple of meetings, <laughs> now that we're there. Um, the other thing that happened over the last couple of weeks uh, is that we ended up uh, going to the uh, FDA uh, building in Detroit, um, and uh, we did some training there about the CFC charity fairs that are coming up. We've been approved for the CFC. Uh, the CFC is where federal employees can donate to our organization via their payroll checks. Uh, and this is tax deductible, uh, and uh, we actually got in the booklet. We're in the booklet. Um, it says here uh, our number is 90376, and um, the little uh, profile line that it says here is seeks to educate people living with medical conditions that could benefit from the use of cannabis when traditional medicine has failed. <coughs> That's what's in this catalog. And yes. We finally did it. So 90376 uh, is our code. So if you know any, of any federal employees from now till December 22nd, they have the ability to uh, change their charitable organization that they do usually donate to, to us. Um, the upcoming charity fairs that are coming up, U.S. District Courthouse, front lobby, U.S. Postal Service, 18 hours long is the fair. Uh, it starts at 9 a.m. and ends at 3 a.m. the next day. We're hitting all shifts. It'll be 1,800 employees at our booth, potentially. So uh, keep that in mind, and we got uh, even more stuff to do, but I think I'm done with Yeah, I think so. Pretty sure so. Oh, no, I'm not done. <laughs> uh, we also uh, achieved a great, great thing. Um, we have a medical advisory board, and on that medical advisory board, we have Dr. Beth Fisher, Dr. Newman. Uh, we have just recently welcomed Dr. Sunil Agarwal. He is uh, actually out of the state of New York. Uh, he's a leading cannabis researcher. 
Uh, he's actually on uh, Patients Out of Time, and he's a board member on ASA. He has joined our medical advisory board. He's going to be helping us now with cancer research and documentation that we're going to need to go to the hospitals, and he potentially will be coming out here next year to educate all of us. Thank you. I don't, I, I wasn't listening. You weren't listening? <laughs> About what? I wasn't listening to you. Did you say um, he worked with Dr. Gupta? Yes, he did work okay. with Dr. Gupta. Yes, yeah. and so we're really happy to have him. If Is the mic off or on? It sounds like it's really low, but okay. No, no, that's all right. Steve was asking to turn it down. Maybe that's why. Is, can everyone hear? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, he did a follow-up interview, and he was really good um, in, in with uh, Paige Fiji's mother, no, Paige Fiji and Dr. Snell. So if you get to look that up, it was an interview done after the Weeds show on CNN. So you'll get to see him there, and he's, uh, he's very active. So it's really great to have these renowned cannabis doctors in our country come and calling us and working with us to learn more. Patients Out of Time, who is another 501c3 who's been around a very long time. Many of you met um, Herb Rosenfeld when he was in town. He, um, he sits on the board for his condition, but he doesn't get too involved in the building of patients out of time. But they called us after we met them last week, and I had met Teresa, who is in the Ohio chapter, and she said, you know, we just have to work together. We really do, because they were excited that we were in Hermanos, but what they offer they, they don't reach out to the public as much. They educate doctor to doctor. So their doctors go out and educate. But they want to do this on a large scale, and they want Michigan Compassion to work with them in 2014 to bring the CME courses to Michigan that will be offered for medical courses that you can get credit to educate the nurses and doctors. So that is something that they bring, and partnering with these um, organizations and companies is a great thing, so um, we look forward to that. Let's see. How many of you heard or watched, i I got to be honest with you, I don't think I've watched TV in probably a week, but I was at uh, Lansing for the protest with the CPS. How many of you have seen on TV the situation with Stephen Maria Green and their uh, baby Brie? So quite a few of you. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that because we know Steve and Maria. They've been at our house. Baby Bree has been around since she was real little. And this is a very good family. Steve and Maria have been here with Bree quite a few times, actually. The baby that you see in the carriage when Steve and Maria come here. So I'm going to share with you what happened to them so you have a clear understanding. Because... It's sort of hard to believe, and somebody watching you know, might scratch their head and question, this is what we know, and this is what we've been told, and what we see. Stephen Maria Green, this started out with um, an issue that someone was robbed by their home for cannabis plants, and they, it wasn't them. But when the robber who sold the plants had taken them, they went by their trailer and dropped some leaves. So when the police were called to investigate, they thought that the robber might have somehow gotten the plants to their trailer. So they went into their trailer where she was a caregiver. Growing for her patient husband, she has MS and he has epilepsy. His wallet was in the room, and this is very complicated because it, it doesn't come to any reason within the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act how that with the situation and we should all be careful in situations like this but his wallet was in that room where she was growing so they automatically assumed he was in there and he shouldn't have been so there they have some charges against them that they're facing in the court of law in Oakland County is it Oakland County it's Oakland County I believe I want to say it's Oakland County because maybe that's where she used to live don't quote me on that one so they've already are dealing with this. They're fighting for their rights, and the attorneys and the, um, uh, have made it very difficult because they're not going to accept a plea, flat out. They have said they're not accepting the plea. They're going to go all the way and fight for their right 
to either have this dismissed or a jury trial. So that's where they stand with that case. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, they live in the same house and he's not allowed in the room or the Yes, and this is where I'm looking at it going, I, I, wait, are you sure like they did, there was nothing wrong or something? Well, then he goes into uh, something he had to prove that they had his card or something. I won't go into that. They haven't been, um, they've been charged. They're in the judicial process right now of, um, like I said, to hopefully to get it. To, um, boy, Steve has told us this many times, and I wish I had. But it, I don't want to get too in depth on their charges, but they're already facing this. Mess. Problem. <laughs> this problem that they had. So now um, Maria has an ex-husband who she's been working with custody. So this is where you need to listen, be careful, because it can happen to anyone. So she has an ex-husband and she he has kept the child from her. It's a son who's a little bit older. And she did get the court to say she has visitation rights, but he's not complying. She's supposed to get this child to see him, and he's getting madder. So what does he do? He calls CPS and tells CPS that the home is unfit for baby Bree or his son or the other three children that belong to Steve who are living in this house and that they're smoking and using cannabis. He lied. The ex-husband called and made her really look bad. So um, my understanding is they went before a judge, Child Protective Services got involved, and this is what we were told and this is what they've said on TV. That uh, it's, you've probably seen the video where they, CPS came, took the child. They never entered her home, so they never saw the condition of her home and where the plants were. They were told by the judge that because you're growing cannabis in your house, you're at a higher risk of robbery if your child is unsafe. That is what she was told. That's the, that's the really awful part about all of this because Representative Irwin, who is working on the G. Crim bill in Michigan, stated in, his, in the press conference in front of CPS, what about the people who have you know, these million dollar homes and all of the expensive things in them, they're at a higher risk for robbery. Should we take away all of their children too? How about the people who have these big screen TVs and stereo systems and nice things in their house? Should we take that away too because they're at more risk for a robbery? It was downright wrong and dirty. What happened to this couple? And what I have ever seen and all the time I've seen them with this child is they are very good parents. <laughs> that baby's happy. She's they use cloth diapers. I mean, they're, <laughs> yeah, so this is the kind of parents they are. So they took her on Friday, and um, they were not going to give her a hearing until October 7th. She did get it to where her, her mom could take Bree, but she's not allowed visitation rights unless they are supervised. So this is just a mess for both of them. They didn't take the three boys out of the house, Steve's children, because it's from a different county, and they're like, uh-uh, they're, they're not touching it. So um, they respected the rights of her. So this is, brings the community some fear, and it we came up at Carmanos, the very last thing, and the last thing we want is to instill fear into anyone, but this is what happens when things like this happen, and it's on TV. So. We made sure, though, it was on TV. A hundred or so of us went to Lansing Tuesday in front of CPS. There was a press conference. There were all kinds of TV stations there. It was very beneficial. It, it seemed to have worked in a manner this time. Um, maybe because it was CPS and it wasn't a courthouse, and they, they were getting the message that they didn't even, we are protected in the act from this. It was, it, I heard the broadcast on NPR. Oh, to the CPS? Yeah. Oh, it was a shame on you. I'm like, shame on you, because it was a shame on them. To not even walk into a house to see the conditions of where this child lives. To not just do a bit more of an investigation. But they 
snatch that baby right away from her on Friday knowing she could do nothing until Monday morning. Mother. Huh? A nursing, a nursing mother on top of that. And so that is what happened to Stephen Marie Green. But since the gathering on Tuesday, they have an emergency hearing tomorrow in front of the judge about this and getting Brie back. So rather than being delayed till the 7th, they are now into an emergency hearing. Oh, Google it. If you Google it, there is so much. I don't know. I don't know if it's the same one who has caused them the problems because I, I don't want to give you information. I don't know. So it's, it's everywhere. If you want to learn more about this case. They have five attorneys case, now. They have five attorneys that's now. That's another great thing. And it's, it's a damn shame that it takes a child to get these attorneys to step up to make a difference. But they do have five pro bono attorneys on this case. This sets a precedent for everyone going to forward in the future with medical cannabis who has children. So we have to make sure it's stopped right there and that they understand that we're, CPS understands that we're protected. So now, and, and this is where we just see all of the education that needs to happen. These, these, they're not educated. They, they don't, they probably didn't even look it up to read what was in the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act. Gabby? Can I get Sure. For just a minute. What time are we? referring to is I have one of these and Gabby said she has one. We actually approached the DARE program about a year ago and asked them if we could work with them on their presentation of marijuana or if they could actually, you know, where they were at with it, hopefully just extract it right out of there. And they, their response, we are not going to educate on marijuana. Well, we saw this in a, in a press release that they were going to drop it. And I'm like, is this true? So they got the email, email back, said they were not going to educate and include medical or marijuana in their program, only alcohol and tobacco. I think we've said this here at this meeting a few times. So Gabby was quite surprised to see Grozeal still had marijuana included in their, in their information. So if you have children and you're in this situation, call Tare and say, wait. Are you going to take it out or not? Because if you're going to take it out, get it out, get new brochures, and get so current. To open that brochure to page 8 where it says marijuana, scratch that out of there and tell them there's new information available. Right. You can't afford to replace the brochure. Right. Then Explain don't put them out. Them right. why that right. doesn't belong. Right. So um, that's just an update on the D.A.R.E. program. And hopefully, I told Gabby, you know, maybe it's just they didn't have new brochures, but if you're going to start a new program, you make sure you have new brochures. But but Dare, and that's this is one thing that I've heard, I've learned and heard. Dare is the individual Dare programs that are out there are actually funded by a different grant. So not everything happens from Mothership Dare. Mothership Dare may have accepted it, but but the local 